Young Rexton has been pretty significantly updated for 2021, and yet its tendency to split opinion remains, mainly because of the vast amount of well-refined, fancy 4x4s that are currently on sale. However, if you're after a rough and ready off-roader, and you're not a brand snob, then how does a go-anywhere 7-seat 4x4 with loads of kit, a seven-year warranty, and a price tag that's 10 to 15 grand cheaper than a comparative rival sound? Well, that's the Sanyong Rexton. And there's a very good reason why you might have seen it in fire and rescue colors or parked up at the roadside in Highways England Brandon. I mean, I think it looks great. Look at the size of that grill. It's ridiculous, but yeah, I think it looks good. It certainly gets a lot of looks, even if people don't recognize that badge. So, who was gonna buy the Sanyong Rexton? Well, let's take a closer look. So, firstly, you've got nice wide opening doors, which is always nice. You've got, also got an unobstructed climb in, emphasis on the word climb, because it is quite a high car, and for some reason there's no grab handles on the A pillars. But anyway, once you get in here, it is a proverbial mixed bag. I mean, some people, well, BMW, Audi, and Mercedes fans, might say that it looks a bit dated in here. I mean, you've got plastic surrounds on these air vents instead of chrome. You've got a lot of buttons to get your head around, and it just doesn't feel all that modern. It does very much feel like a German SUV from like seven years ago. However, I kind of like it. <laughs> I mean, new cars nowadays do have a tendency to feel over-engineered, and sometimes that can have a detrimental effect on general ease of use and usability, but I think the Rexton's got a nice balance of buttons. You know, there's a, there's a practical amount of them, so all the menus and functions are easy to navigate through. You've also got a nice clean dashboard design with just the right amount of fanciful touches, like this perforated leather insert, ooh -er. But arguably most important of all, are these two screens. You've got a nice big 9.2 inch touchscreen in the center and you've got a 12.3 inch screen behind the steering wheel. And although these screens aren't as customizable as what you might get in a Mercedes or an Audi, they do the job and they look the part. And this touchscreen is absolutely razor sharp. I think it's one of the sharpest touchscreens I've ever used. It actually reminds me of the previous gen Kia system. Now these two screens sit alongside a lot of other kit, including the likes of SatNav, DAB radio, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto a plethora of cameras and loads of driver assist features. So so yeah, it's not the best looking interior out there, but for an off-roader that's probably gonna get battered, it's practically five-star quality. In terms of general storage and practicality in the cabin, you've got some decent sized door bins, but the most impressive here is a central cubby with a little cover on it. You've also got big cup holders that will easily hold a flask and you've got lots of underarm storage and a really good sized glove box. Now, just like the front, the rear has nice wide opening doors, always a nice touch, and they also have grab handles, unlike the front. So that's a nice touch for someone vertically challenged like me. Now, when you're back here, there is lots of leg room, lots of headroom, like you might expect, and you've got a heated seat function back here as well. Very luxurious. Now, these seats recline, so you can Oh God, they recline quite a bit. I didn't realize they weren't packed that much. So yeah, they do recline, but um, they don't actually slide back and forth, which, you know, for seven seaters, it is a nice option to have, especially when it comes to freeing up leg room for whoever sat back there. But I would argue you don't actually need it in this car, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Apart from that, it's very easy to move around back here due to the pretty much non-existent hump, uh, the transmission hump in the floor. And um, because that floor is quite flat, You've also got quite a lot of leg room if you're the middle passenger, and I would say you could probably fit three, three adults back here if need be. You've got a fold-down armrest with two cup holders, two big cup holders, and a bit of storage there as well. You've also got a little bit of storage back here. Uh, you know, nothing to shout about there. And the door bins, a bit like the front, you know, they do the job, but they're not great. They are a bit awkward. Now, what about those seats back there? Well, let's just cut to a bit of a better angle. Boom, right. Thankfully, these seats fold flat like that, and then they actually flip forward. So climbing in is quite easy to do. And you fold these seats down, and um, yeah, once you're back here, I mean, let's put that into the upright position as opposed to the reclined position. And you've got, you know, you've got a decent amount of leg room and head room. I'd say anyone up to six foot would be comfortable back here. They actually sit quite reclined, the seats as well. So. You know, you slide back, put your knees against those seats, 
it is quite comfortable. It's nice to see, you know, a seven seater that offers seats fit for adults and not just kids. So yeah, well done, Sanyong. Um, getting out is pretty easy to do because there's a lever here and under here. So you don't need someone to help you. So as you might expect, boot space with all seven seats in place isn't great. So let's just fold these down now and they fold down very easily. And that leaves you with a much more usable 800 liters or so. I mean, that is absolutely huge. And all of the seats fall down fairly flat as well, leaving you with a van-like amount of storage. And this false floor here ensures that you do have a smooth run from the back right to those front seats. However, it does add about another four inches or so onto the load lip height. So you might struggle to lift things on. I mean, it's only a small thing. You can remove this, but then it kind of defeats the whole point of the uncompromised boot space. Now, one last thing I do want to mention is this storage cubby here. I mean, it's absolutely huge and it's great for, for stopping delicate items when you've been shopping like eggs or milk from rolling around. So the Rexton has a fairly nice interior, lots of practicality and a lot of kit. But a lot of people will argue, especially those after a does a bit of everything SUV with saloon like refinement, they will argue that things kind of go to pot when you head out on the road with the Rexton. Again, there are two very different ways to look at it. Yes, the steering is vague. You do get a lot of body roll in the corners to the point where you're terrified that you're gonna wake up any sleeping babies in the back after every turn. The gearbox can feel a little bit asleep and you get a lot of engine noise when emerging from bends. The ride is a bit fidgety, even over smooth surfaces and around town, you're probably looking at, I don't know, 30, 35 miles per gallon. A well-refined Land Rover, Toyota or Peugeot attempt. However, the flip side of that argument is that you're getting a 4x4 off-roader with a proper old-school ladder chassis that can tow up to 3.5 tonnes, which is about a tonne more than your typical big SUV. I mean, underneath, the Rexton is very similar to its Musso pickup truck sibling, and you can tell. I mean, there's things like a high and low ratio four-wheel drive modes, which will get you up and down pretty much anything. Then there's little clever systems like the trailer sway control system for added safety. And while the 2.2 litre diesel does feel a bit lackadaisical around town, it has got a lot of low down pull in the rev range when you need it. And yeah, it is a bit unrefined at like 30, 40 miles an hour, but when you get up to speed on the motorway, it does settle down nicely. Now for those company car drivers looking to bag a Rexton as their next car, you are looking at the highest BIK tax rating for 2021 and 2022 at 37%. So, it's a 4x4 first and an SUV second. It's as simple as that really. But fair play to Sanyong, they've made the interior much more habitable and it does have practicality in spades. Okay, it does feel like a van went on the road, but it feels like a pickup truck went off it. And that's a really good compromise, depending on who you ask. <laughs>